Hey there, so today we have another video. This is both a tutorial on how to do a slow pour Pilsner, and then more importantly, we are actually also reviewing Bierstadt's The Slow Pour Pills. So I'm just gonna get into this beer because it'll take a minute, so there'll be a lot of talking because uh, otherwise there'll be a lot of downtime. So this slow pour technique actually takes quite a while. So first, what you wanna do is obviously have the beer cold, and then you just wanna pour pretty much as aggressively as possible. Unfortunately, I got my scrub in there, but the Spiegel out glass is just unfortunate in getting uh, every single pocket clean. So eh, this is not a beer clean glass, <laughs> unfortunately, but we're still doing this little pour. So this is what happens when you just, you know, instantly want to open a can and uh, dig into it. I tried my best to clean this a little bit, but it's been sitting out for a little bit, but I did scrub it. So anyway, talking about this beer. First off, I have to thank Sandy. So anyway, pour the beer aggressively down the middle and uh, built a really nice white head. And all you do right now is just wait, that's what you're doing. And so what are we talking about here? This is Bierstadt Lagerhaus. Bierstadt Lagerhaus is a brewery out of uh, Denver, Colorado. And they are just sort of one of the, um, I don't know what to call it, like the starlings in the beer geek slash beer professional industry. Um, people just love their beers. They are the only lager only brewery in Colorado, so they only make lagers. And one of the crazy things about them is that they are a three malt, two hop, one yeast brewery. We're talking about breweries that have like tons of different kinds of malts. They use, you know, play around with like five different yeast strains. They um, hop with like 10 different hops. Their lagers get hops, just get hops. They only focus on German style lager as traditional as possible they can. They use copper kettles. They use um, decoction mash. They use uh, all kinds of crazy, crazy, crazy techniques to really perfect and sort of make the artistry of lager as perfected as they can in the um, German way that they know how to brew and taste beer. So anyway, yes, this is just pretty much take your time with this one and aggressively pour as much, pour aggressively as possible. Ideally, I would have a um, Pilsner glass that's long and skinny, but we're getting there. So what does this do? This also involves a question about uh, confusion between side pour pills and slow pour pills. Slow pour pills is sort of a technique in the sense that you're taking time with the beer. You're allowing a, a lot of heads to be created. You're allowing a ni nice rocky head to be created, but also releasing a lot of CO2. So uh, specifically the beer stop beers are um, uh, carved up to a higher volume of CO2. I think somewhere around uh, 3.0 uh, volumes of CO2. For standard reference, a lot of your general ales are at 2.5 um, volumes of CO2, and then maybe your lagers at 2.7, 2.8, but they, they bump it up a little bit more because all their beers are going to be slow poured and they're, you know, you're releasing the carbonation. Obviously, you can sort of tell I'm like violently trying to pour this beer. And, um, you know, so we're getting there. Yeah, this is a slow pour right there. Unfortunately, I did, wish I did a little bit better job of my glass, but hey, this is what you do. <laughs> when you're sort of like instantly trying to do a video. So apologies about the glass. Apologies, apologies. And um, so what does this do? First off, it releases a lot of CO2. You build a really nice rocky head. So you're gonna have a different mouthfeel on the beer. And then also you have this beautiful, just creamy, creamy head on it. Suarez is another famous brewery that does it. Anyway, but also talking about it. Slow pour is sort of a technique that you use. Um, side pull that you might've uh, might, might have also heard, which is use with slow pour. Side pull, side pull is actually literally just a technical term for a type of faucet. It is uh, most familiar with um, any, if you go to a local uh, bar that has Pilsner Quell, it is a side pull. It's generally derives from a Czech a serv a beer service and it is a different way of serving. Whereas a beer, uh, an American um, standard beer tap, you sort of pull it and there's either an on and off. There's literally nothing in between. Whereas the Side pull sort of allows you to um, generate foam in sort of a 45 degree angle and then the 90 is the full release. And so you sort of are allowed to play with your creation of foam. It also allows for like a small bubbled foam creation versus like the violent kind of um, pet, uh, foam creation if you try to like play, um, you know, play with that with an American faucet. So uh, very interesting. But anyway, we've had the beer poured out. Unfortunately, a very ugly glass. I'm sorry about that. But I've been, this is one of the beers I've like wanted to try for so long. So what I smell is just generally the um, rich maltiness of it. Um, it is just like Pilsner malt for days. It's got a little bit of like, it's just got that wonderful rich depth of sweetness of Pilsner malt. It, it, it's, it's crackery, it's um, like dough, but it's like, it's just freshly cracked grains. And it's got a little bit of like spicy noble hop character. It's a very pretty beer. It cans about a month to date. 
fresh. Wow. So, first thing you notice about this beer is that with the slow pour, it really has a, a very different kind of carbonation. Um, it's obviously just much, 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 much lower. The bitterness on this one is quite nice. It sort of rides and sort of like attacks and sits slowly with this like light herbal, kind of grassy, traditional German hop character. Yeah, it's so strange. It, it almost has this like menthol kind of hop character. Um, it's a really wonderfully crisp beer. What this beer does wonderfully is that how smooth it is. It, 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 it's a strange adjective, obviously, you know, it's a very easy adjective to use, but with lager, there's sometimes sort of these edges we find, you know, Pilsner and, and Hellas at, there's just these like uh, uh, peaks and valleys. This one is just like, it like sort of just washes on your mouth. And it's sort of like how a New England IPA sometimes treats a palate. It's just smooth and then the bitterness rides in. It's it, it's very um, shaved down in its waviness. The, the transition from the malt to hops is just like beautifully like uh, woven in together. The strange thing about this beer is that it's just so familiar to so much, you know, lager and like even like, I, it obviously doesn't taste like adjunct lager, but it's that menthol greenness that almost like reminds me of like light struck, which is strange. And obviously this is in a can, it's not light struck, but it's just that weird kind of like combination. This is a lager. Obviously we're all very familiar with adjunct lagers, Corona, Heineken. And then there's that like, like very specific, like fresh herbal, almost like eucalyptus. That's what it is, eucalyptus kind of hop character. And that's sort of, I guess, what you get from these beers because like, um, this is obviously a German intent from an American brewery that's super fresh, but we don't taste those because obviously those beers get shipped all the way from Germany. You don't really quite understand what fresh German pills taste like. This is arguably, in a lot of people's minds, the most, one of the most um, true examples of German uh, Pilsner being brewed in the States. Yeah, it's really nice. It's a crusher, you don't really have to think about it. It's not snappy and bitterness. It's not like Pivo Pills where it's very um, clearly modern. It doesn't really have any of that kind of like um, Italian Pilsner thing where it's like clearly quite hoppy and the dry hopping comes in. It's wonderfully refreshing, but it's also so tame at the same time, right? Like walking in with this with high expectations, there's really, this, this beer is not supposed to really impress, right? So, you know, walking in this beer, you're like, oh my God, I'm like this is the greatest thing ever, but really it's, it's none of those things. It's just like very, very, very good Pilsner. And like, and I think this is one of those beers where you have to drink it a lot to really appreciate how beautiful it is because it's so subtle, noticeable, uh, like 1%, 2%, 5% differences out of hundred that make this so good versus like something else. But again, it just takes familiarity probably for me. And one of the noticeable things that I've, you know, as I keep drinking it is just, again, when I was talking about the, the, the smoothness of this beer and the, the lack of jagged edges, it really comes with the malt. I mean, from, from their goal with the decoction mashing is that they're, they're trying to offer this just like, they're, they're trying to extract as much flavor and richness and impression of sweetness out of the malt while still creating a, just a beautifully dry beer. And one that just rides with this like impressively noticeable, traditional bitterness instead of like an American bitterness. Yeah. That's one of the really noticeable things out is how impressive, unimpressive it is because how smooth and delicate it is. But then realize like if you've had other craft pills, they just don't have, they generally don't have that. Like, like sometimes like pills and mold for me just so fresh and vibrant. It sings of like white grape and like this like cracked um, grain tone to it. But this one just sits there. It's got this mellow, mellow, mellow. That's what is mellow and smooth for a delicious pilsner. That still also brings in this uh, bright bitterness back end, on the back end. Uh, this for me. It's so clean. This for me gets a solid 95, but I feel with more familiarity with this beer, I, I think I'd really, truly get, come to love it. I think this is really a beer that really takes a four pack of case to really get familiar with and time to get familiar with. And then also something that you blind against other Pilsners, but you know, as I drink it more, it's just like, it's just a little nuances that it's gonna take me like, you know, the end of this glass and then more examples of this to really, really find the little intricacies. But yeah, it's really fun. It, it's again, it's not a beer that's gonna completely um, knock your socks off, but if you look, really look for those little tiny details, you know, 
um, you're going to find them. So that's how to pour a uh, slow pour pills. This is Beer Shot Lager House, the slow pour pills. Finally, got to check this one off the list. Until next time, guys. Cheers. Later.